Hey, 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 everybody, it's Mr. Riley here, and uh, this uh, geometry lessons on inequalities in two triangles, and also, I don't know why they put it in this section, but indirect proofs, which uh, I know will be on your state test, is also in here. So, let's go ahead and begin. It's also in this lesson. It's a weird spot to put it, but it is. So, the hinge theorem, it says this, okay, this is kind of a, a lot here. If two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the included angle of the first triangle is larger than the included angle of the second triangle, then the third side of the first triangle is longer than the third side of the second triangle. And you're thinking, what? Here's a picture. Okay, check this out. Can you see these two sides of this triangle are congruent to these two sides of this triangle right here? Say yes with me. Yes. Okay, can you see that this included angle of this triangle is larger than this included angle of this triangle? Yes. That means this side must be bigger than this side right here. Okay. Uh, and so uh, the hinge theorem works in reverse too. It says this, if you have two sides equal to two sides right here and the third side is bigger than this third side, then the included angle over here would be bigger. This angle C is bigger than this angle F right here. So, uh, so given that uh, segment ST is congruent to PR, how does uh, angle PST compare to angle SPR? Okay, so here I have these two sides equal. Remember the reflexive property. I'm going to go ahead and strike that guy in there because PS equals PS on both of this. And since this side is bigger than this side, that means this angle right here is going to be bigger than that angle right there. Okay, so there you go. Isn't that fun? Heck yeah. All right, so uh, steps to writing an indirect proof. All right. So identify the statement that you want to prove. So you know how they always give you the given part and the proof part? So locate the prove part. And then you assume temporarily that that prove part statement is false by assuming the opposite is true. Okay? And then you're going to go ahead and reason logically through your proof until you reach a contradiction. Then you say, after you get to your contradiction, what I originally assumed was false and blah 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 and your desired conclusion whatever you're trying to prove has to be true alright so here's a, so a, here's some given some given statements and some proof statements so list the assumption that begins your indirect proof in each okay so given x is an odd number prove that x is not divisible by four okay so we always start with the opposite of our proof statement prove if this says x is not divisible by 4. So the opposite would be to assume x is divisible by 4. Okay, that's your answer. That's what they're asking for. Let's do that with this one. Given a is greater than 0, prove that 1 over a is greater than 0. So I want to say the opposite. Assume 1 over a. What's the opposite of greater than 0? But some of you guys don't know. Less than or equal to 0. Duh. Hit your forehead. Duh. Okay. So here, here's a sentence. If a tailor wants to make a coat, then he makes his pants first. Okay, see this if-then form? The then part is your proof statements. He, he wants to make the pants first. So we're going to assume that he doesn't want to make the pants first. Okay? Easy, huh? All right, so the following statement can be rearranged, can be arranged uh, to make an indirect proof of this, quote, theorem. So rearrange them in correct order. Here's your theorem. A bridge hand must contain more than three cards of the same suit. Also, a bridge hand contains 13 cards, okay? So, um, now that's, uh, that's given right there. That's my theorem. So, we're going to assume temporarily uh, the theorem. That's my uh, proof part right there. We want to prove that a bridge hand must contain more than three cards of the same suit, okay? So, uh, so if a bridge hand does not contain more than three cards of the same suit. It does not contain more than 12 cards. And you're thinking, huh, I'm looking for assume temporarily. So I know it's not that one. There's the first one. Assume that a bridge hand does not contain more than three cards of the same suit. That's my first one right there. All right, so let's go ahead and put a one right there, okay? So assume that a bridge hand does not contain more than three cards of the same suit. Is there any one of these that picks up with does not contain more than three cards of the same suit? Yes, this one right here. If a bridge hand does not contain more than three cards of the same suit, it does not contain more than 12 cards. So this must be my second one right here because it follows right after this one right here. Okay? And then, okay, now this is given a bridge hand contains 13 cards. This says it does not contain more than 12 cards. So right here, this contradicts the fact that a bridge hand contains 13 cards. This must be my third, my third one right here. 
All right. And so obviously that's my fourth one right there. So, but I ran into the contradiction. So then I can say, therefore, what I assumed was false, and a bridge hand must be what I said uh, must be more than three cards of the same suit. All right. Wasn't that fun? I knew you'd like that. Smile with me.